I pissed off Dave Meltzer, my good friend Dave. I pissed him off over the weekend with the, the comments that I made last week um, about the pro wrestling gorilla, the outlaw promotion in, in California and their hand grenade spot from this fucking, you know, reprobate Chuck Taylor. And, and I guess Dave made some comment. You listen to him. What do you, what do you think pissed him off the worst? Uh, that's a tough question to answer. I think first of all, and we said this when we talked about the Okada Omega match, it's important to note that wrestling is subjective. What you like and what you think is great is not necessarily something that is universally considered great by everyone. Everyone has their own tastes and their own. I, and I can accept that. Some people like the ultimate warrior. Sable had fans. I can't understand it, but I, I accept it. But I listened to that. There, there were a few things I definitely wanted to say, Jim. You know, one is Dave seemed puzzled why you were talking about this spot from 2013 now. And I could say, cause a lot of people, when they send you stuff, they copy me on it on Twitter. We got sent this match out of nowhere. This one spot from the match within like a week, 25 to 50 people sent it for, for no yeah. good reason. I don't know why it just, it just uh, you know, and like NBC used to say, if you haven't seen it, it's new to you. All of a sudden it's just popped up on my Twitter and people are saying, the most embarrassing one minute in wrestling history. So I click on it. You know, I fell for it. And here this fucking, you know, looks like a high school kid. You know, all these other guys are doing. And it, they did a bunch of Three Stooges eye pokes. There's like eight guys involved in this. And then the fucking high school kid looks like he couldn't whip cream with an outboard motor, comes in with an invisible hand grenade, and it blows up, and all eight guys fly out of the fucking ring. Right. The height of stupidity is what yes. really you're saying. Uh, what seems to bother Dave, and, and I'm sure Dave can say I'm wrong, but I've uh, been a subscriber to The Observer since 93. I've read every single issue he's ever published, and I've been listening to him do radio since he was on John Arezzi's show in 1990, in the uh, early 1990s, I should say. I think what it comes down to, again, everyone has their own style and and stuff that they like, but Dave seems to not understand why you, in his eyes were a very progressively minded wrestling fan, someone who, as he has noted, accepted Dynamite Kid versus Tiger Mask. And now, at times, because of personal issues or animosity, you know, you don't like Kenny Omega. So obviously, it may cloud anything you see with Kenny Omega, but he seems to think, and he can tell me I'm wrong, that you just have a very difficult time accepting any of this current high flying stuff or the the strength as he sees it of pro wrestling gorilla well and and, and that's and that's the and by the way and, and my personal dislike for kenny omega stems from the stupid shit he did in wrestling in the ring in front of people yes he no showed and lied about a fucking ring of honor booking but that i mean you know fuck i've had pleasant conversations with jake and he no showed me and and when he was the smoky mountain champion Never dropped it <laughs> so that you can get over that. But when you just do shit that just makes the wrestling business look horrible and just uh, uh, egregious offenses. But anyway, Omega, that's it's not just personal. It's personal because of what he did in the ring. I take that personal. But uh, Dave, on his radio show, his podcast or whatever the case on the Internet, he talked about what I said about this shit. And he did. He focused on. Well, Cornette doesn't like flippy wrestling. No. Th and the eye poke spot. Well, the eye poke spot under normal circumstances would, I would have fired everybody involved in it because it was just so ridiculous. I mean, they were blocking and throwing the other guy's fingers in the other guy's eyes and it was just ludicrous. But the invisible hand grenade made the eye poke spot look like goddamn, you know, Billy Robinson and fucking Carl Gotch. Um, it, it, the eye poke spot, which he completely go glossed over and never even really mentioned was what I was cutting a promo on. Flippy wrestlers, yes, they've gone too far. And he mentioned that last uh, several months ago, I mentioned that Will Osprey and Ricochet. I said it was it was choreographed tumbling. It wasn't really wrestling. They went too far. I said at the time, those guys are great athletes, no doubt about it. It was an incredible athletic exhibition, but it went too far to be pro wrestling. And I've said I saw Ricochet at the what culture show in Orlando and actually in that environment and with the other talent with talent that was on the card, I told him to his face and he thanked me for it. I said, you and these three other guys, Drew Galloway was one or the only fucking professional wrestlers that I saw on this fucking show. 
So it wasn't that, I, you know, the flippy shit. When you, when you got guys that haven't been trained properly and have rotten basics and are sloppy athletes and look like they just got out of high school and don't have proper gear, but they're trying to do 720 splashes and everything, that's flippy shit. Osprey and Ricochet, they're great athletes, and they can work. They just they took it too far. It, there was obvious cooperation, which tuned me out of it. But I didn't eviscerate those guys. They didn't do blatant, phony bullshit. They did really artistic, good-looking, phony bullshit. Uh, with with uh, the spot being years ago, like I said, if I haven't seen it, it's new to me. But the thing with PWG, because he d- he does like that promotion. And he said, well, great wrestlers have been there and great wrestlers have come from there. Well, I'm sorry, but if the guys do something like an invisible hand grenade, they should be fired. And if the promotion doesn't fire them, then they are a bullshit promotion. And whether they have good matches or not, it's like, okay, geez, we haven't murdered anybody in three or four weeks now, but we really, we gave money to charity last week. So that makes us okay. No, The problem with PWG is it's the inmates are running the asylum. It's a bunch of the guys that have no filter on themselves and have no way to, to, to hold themselves back from doing shit that they wouldn't, they shouldn't do. And, and, and is embarrassing to the business, even though they can do all this great shit. They also do stupid shit and they don't have a promoter and a booker that has a lot more experience than they do. Like every other great territory had over the years to tell them, whether you can do this or not, you're not going to be allowed to do this because it makes my business look stupid and it makes our business look stupid and it makes everybody involved in our show look stupid. If you're on a goddamn comedy show and there's four comedians and the second one to, you know, like fucking when Michael Richards said the N word over and over and over and over and over, well, everybody in the comedy club that night looked fucking stupid and bad. When you have somebody on your show that does stupid, bad shit, it makes everybody, you get shit all over everybody's face. And that's my problem. And, you know, he was concentrating on the flippy stuff. Tiger Mask and Dynamite Kid were revolutionary. But you go back and you watch those matches, and at no time did they ever lose sight of the fact that they were trying to, they were supposed to be simulating a contest where two guys were beating the fuck out of each other. And they just happened to be able to do some incredible shit. And of course, dynamite kid ended up in a wheelchair for it. So maybe there's a cautionary tale. Um, Kenny Omega is a great athlete. I, I never really liked his wrestling before because he reminded me of, he was very ultimate warrior ish. He had those goofy facial expressions and he shook the ropes a lot and shook his head a lot, but he was a good athlete and he's had some good matches. But unfortunately, did I mention he wrestled a fucking nine year old girl in a blow up doll. So he is disqualified from consideration as a serious professional wrestler. And he should have been boiled in oil and his fat sold for soap. He should never have been allowed in a ring again after that, regardless of how good he was, because there's going to be great wrestlers come along. He can be replaced, but there's not going to be anybody else, I hope, that wrestled competitive matches with nine-year-old girls and blow-up dolls. The Young Bucks, they're great athletes. They do some great shit. My problem has not been with their athletics, Although they do way too much, they made the super kick totally meaningless, and they unfortunately look like Ricky Morton to the Young Bucks looks like Lex Luger. They look like grade school kids that can't whip anybody, and but they disqualified themselves from serious consideration in my mind as professional wrestlers when they, in front of fans and on the internet, super kicked a nine year old kid for his birthday. So fuck you, you unprofessional fucks. Sorry, I I like these guys personally. I worked with them in the Ring of Honor. (laughs) No, I mean, seriously, I've never had a crossword with them as far as personally. I had dinner with them for my 50th birthday. Kerry Silken took us all out in fucking New York. But you super kicked a nine-year-old kid for his birthday on in front of fans and on video for the entire world to see. So fuck you, you unprofessional fucks. And we talked about. Cody Rhodes having to do the dick spot for the Joey Ryan character. Yeah, Dave had a lot to say about that. He he said in in on that San Francisco show they just did at the Cow Palace, Cody Rhodes and Joey Ryan was the main event. So the people, it, 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 he defended Joey Ryan's dick spot because he said, quote, it gets him booked. It gets a reaction. Here's a guy trying to market himself 
when he wrestles, people want to see the spot, so more power to him. Well, no, less power to this fucking piece of shit, because I don't even like him personally. I've always thought he was a substandard fucking talent with an average or sub-average fucking look, sub-average fucking work skills, and goddamn, he's one of the fucking crowd. <laughs> and he started doing this shit to get a reaction and to get a pop. Well, no, not more power to him because that makes the business and everybody else in it look like shit just to get this one sub average fucking guy, some more bookings. Not everybody can play for the fucking Dallas Cowboys. Not everybody can play for the goddamn Boston Celtics. Not everybody can play for Manchester United. And this fucking guy is another one of those guys. It's a marginal pro wrestler who has no skills whatsoever that are uh, standout skills in any category. I've never heard him cut a promo because he's always been an underneath guy. Never been on TV, but I ha don't hear a lot of people saying, oh, Joey Ryan's a goddamn greatest promo since Jake Snake Roberts or Mick Foley. So I assume he's sub average at that also. And just because it gets this one guy booked, should we sacrifice the image of an entire business and make guys who actually do have talent look bad simply because this guy wants to get himself booked and get himself over. No. And Cody Rhodes, I was, I was disappointed in because he is a real talent and he did this dick spot in front of a pretty good crowd in San Francisco because they marketed this thing well. And Dave said, well, he had to do it because people went, no, he didn't have to do it. You know what he could have done? He could have said, I'm Cody fucking Rhodes and I'm in your main event. And if you expect me to get flipped by this guy's dick, then just tell me so I can leave. Now I've walked out on six figure fucking contracts more than once because people wanted me to do stupid shit and make myself or the business look bad. So I'm sure he, he wouldn't have missed that one payoff and I'm sure they wouldn't let him walked out and he could have done the old Ernie Ladd thing. He could have walked right out around the ring in a circle, let all the people see him, and then walked out the front door. And then what are they going to say? Why Cody Rhodes ain't there? Because he wouldn't let this fucking local guy flip him with his fucking dick. And when I was at the What Culture show in Orlando, WrestleMania week, I was doing commentary. Joey Ryan was a last-minute fill-in for another guy that couldn't be there. And James Dixon came to me and said, well, we got Joey Ryan on the show. And I was to be doing the, I was the lead announcer. And I said, look. I said, I'm just telling you, it's your show. You can do whatever you want to do. But if this guy's going to be flipping people with his dick, I'm not going to call it. I'm not going to announce that match. I will come to the back. You can say he's had a phone call. He's got hooping belch, projectile diarrhea, whatever the fuck. And you can put your guy in that place. He said, no. He said, I think the fucking dick spot's stupid and embarrassing too. And I'm just going to tell him not to do it. And I assure you, ladies and gentlemen, I don't know what they paid Joey Ryan that day, but I, I assure you I was making a lot more money to be there than Joey Ryan was. So he told Joey Ryan not to do the dick spot, which of course got over, I'm, you know, pretty well with Joey Ryan. Cause he, he still did this deal where he pulls a lollipop out of his trunks where he's headed next to his dick. He's fascinated with his dick. You need a telescope to see it, but he's fascinated with his dick. He pulls a lollipop out and he sticks it in the other guy's mouth. The other guy went for that for whatever reason. I don't know. Guys don't have a lot of fucking pride or integrity these days. And, and they did all that bullshit, but he didn't do the dick spot. But when he did all this other comedy horse shit, then I just responded by, you know, calling him like a fucking flummox, like a goddamn, you know, outlaw guy that has no credibility because I wasn't seeing any talent. I was only seeing hoo-ha. And I called it like that. And, and, and But with Dave... <sighs> He's making excuses for this. And I'm going to say this. I've known Dave for over 30 years. I've got every issue of The Observer since 1984 in my closet. I have incredible admiration for his work ethic and his dedication that he has done however many tens of thousands of words in a newsletter every week. Miss, I think he missed like two or three weeks when he was deathly ill and having surgery in 30-something years. He has tremendous knowledge. Of, of wrestling history and, 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 and business history, not only the guy's history, but business history. And he's got an incredible outlook on that. And when he reports facts as facts, houses, gates, things that happen, he checks his sources. He reports facts. I'm not impugning his veracity, but his opinions. Apparently today I have a problem with and don't understand 
And and that's why, you know, whether it's hands-free choke slams or dance routines breaking out or invisible hand grenades or flipping people with your dick, that's not pro wrestling. It's not an evolution of pro wrestling. It's silly shit from fucking guys who can't get over any other way because they don't have the talent. They don't have the genetics. They don't have the knowledge or they just don't give a shit. And those people should not be allowed to be on wrestling shows. And there should be people in positions as promoters and bookers that don't allow them on wrestling shows. But since the inmates are running the asylum these days, it happens. So I, I, I say that today, and actually, I'm going to, now that I'm thinking about it, I'm going to email Dave when we get finished taping his program, and I'm going to invite him to come on next week, and because he, since he is a guy that I acknowledge is a smart guy, and a talented guy, and a person who I respect, I can debate him, I can talk about him, about differences in our, or talk to him, rather, about differences in our opinions. There's some other people I can't fucking do that. But him, I can, and 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 hopefully we he will if if he's got time, <clears throat> you know he can come on the on the show next week, uh, and and we can talk about this, and he can try to explain to me why one of who I consider to be smarter guys in business doesn't realize that this shit doesn't do anybody any good except these substandard talents that go viral and get a few outlaw bookings on independent shows because they can't do it with talent and ability and fucking charisma and do it the right way. And I don't know why that they're allowed to do shit like that. Uh, so anyway, I'm going to email Dave. We'll see if he comes on next week. He's got a busier schedule than I do, but we will make ourselves available. We'll bend over backwards and go the extra mile. You can change your schedule to get Dave Meltzer on this show. Can't you? No, I'd like to hear you guys have the discussion. I mean, I could be wrong. I very much could be wrong, and I'm sure he may say I'm wrong, but I've noticed that ever since you made that comment a while back that, well, weed's now legal in California, I don't want to, I don't know if I want to say he's taking, (laughs) I don't know if I want to say he's taking shots at you, but for the first time, he's had like a little bit more negativity towards you than even when you destroyed Casey O'Connor's car or threatened to kill Wade Keller. Like this somehow has been the big thing that has bothered him because I heard on his show a while back with Brian Alvarez, and it's a great show. It's one of the few shows I'll try to listen to because I don't have a lot of time for shows. He had Kenny Omega on a while back and they were wrapping up. Brian Alvarez was wrapping up the show and Dave stopped him and said, well, Kenny, before you go, I just heard you do this uh, interview where you talked all about Jim Cornette. Can you just repeat all of that right here on the air? <laughs> and again, I- I'm paraphrasing a little bit. Yeah, but but- I-, I don't listen to this, to anybody's show really, unfortunately, because I don't have time. So I don't know about these things. Yeah, but I- So all of a sudden he has, he stops the show from ending. So Kenny Omega can do a five minute promo or whatever, however long it was about why he doesn't like you, why he thinks you don't like him, which was ridiculous. And then there's this. And again, I don't like him because he fucking wrestled a girl in a blow up doll. That's fucking I've been right well, out front with that. I've slapped him in the fucking face with it. Kenny Omega seems to think it's more about that. It's good for your business for you to hate him, which that's how is it argument. good for my what? 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 That's the argument. A lot of these guys think that you don't actually not like what they do. But you've developed this business where you can't like anything like what they do, because which doesn't make any sense. And again, people look over the fact that you love the revival matches that I showed you, the Tyler Bate Pete Dunn matches you've raved about. It's not about current wrestling. It's not about modern wrestling. They they can't just come out and admit that I don't like them because they're jack offs and they do phony fucking wrestling bullshit that makes the business look bad. And I hate them and want them to drop over and burst into flames because of that. Correct. They <laughs> they don't admit that. But but again, there was that. And then again, this when you look at last week's episode of the Jim Cornette Experience, what was the most newsworthy thing? Was it you talking about your thoughts about this? 2013 spot and then it kind of morphing into a a brief dismissal of pro wrestling gorilla you didn't go too deep into that and us talking about what a dipshit joey ryan is and by the way fuck that guy that guy should be thrown out of the wrestling business for a number of reasons including that tweet he sent out where he had an easter basket around his crotch and said he has an easter basket for kids you know what? oh god fuck that guy another guy for my wood chipper club him and jbl 
Well, and he, and he, and he also, and here's another reason. And I assure you folks, I, my business is doing just fine. I don't know how I would make money off of, because I'm pissing off the people who like that kind of thing. Um, and so I'm not expecting to make money off of the Joey Ryan fans and all the video game wrestling fans that tweet me say, oh, Cornet, you're an old man and yell, yell at a cloud. I'm not making any money off of them. And the, the people that do buy my merchandise and listen to the show and like actual real pro wrestling, they're already with me. It, it, they already feel the same way. It's embarrassing to them to watch this shit too. So I don't see how I'm making money off of this. Uh, but no, anybody who knows me and has worked with me for the past 20 years, and I've trained in OVW almost every member of the modern roster over the past 15 fucking years, and everybody who's known me personally knows, yes, I do, as a hobby, as in my personal life, despise this hokey horse shit from these fucking phony fucking wannabe fucking wrestlers that do phony bullshit. Uh, so I, I can't understand why they, they is honesty that abstract of a concept or that, you know, uh, rare that nobody actually just says what they fucking really think anymore. And also some of these guys are just oblivious. Joey Ryan, you probably didn't see this cause you were off Twitter after Dave, you know, cause Dave did the show. And again, Dave went out of his way to bring this up and he did 15 minutes on it, which is incredible. He did longer on it than we did, I think. And then he had a few tweets about it. Joey Ryan responded to one of them and said about the grenade spot. The grenade spot was awesome. The invisible grenade is as realistic as knocking someone out with a tennis racket. Oh, God. Well, tell that to any of the fucking dozen or so people that have sued me for knocking them out with a fucking tennis racket in a <laughs> non-working situation. I've got one on my office wall. I talked to a guy, by the way, last week in West Virginia. It was there in Altoona that night. I hit that fan that come over the rail and tackle Bobby. He said, blood shot six fucking feet. But uh, Joey Ryan also, one tweet I did say, Joey Ryan tweeted, superheroes aren't real and neither is wrestling. It's all make-believe to entertain people. No, you fucking piece of shit. Nobody's entertained by you except a bunch of other fucking guys that want their, that have their dicks in their hands and wish that they could jump up in the ring and play wrestler like you do. Fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck you. And did I mention fuck you? You fucking sleazy prick. You're fucking not even worth my goddamn time. But uh, uh, so we will respond or we will discuss this hopefully with Dave next week or whenever we'll clear our schedules, whenever we can get Dave on the program to try to defend a guy, a grown man flipping people around with his fucking dick. Well, he's not really grown. He's a goddamn midget, but you know what I mean? He's an adult. <laughs> he's an, he's a, of adult age, even though he's, you know, my God, he's about as big as fucking pills that the guys used to take in the eighties. 